Hey guys, welcome to the deck profile for Burning Abyss Ubel. So, as you guys know, Burning Abyss Ubel did not do that hot. Uh, I mean, unless you're playing Lake of Fire. Ah, uh, see, see, Fire Lake, you, you see, you see what I did there with the whole hot thing. Oh, okay. Anyway, I decided to take this deck off of Vitamin and Y. Um, you know, every single Ubel deck, uh, you know, has synergy, on Vitamin and Y has synergy with Ubel. And while some may have more synergy than the others, they always have at least some synergy. This one, on the other hand, it was literally just Ubel thrown in into a Burning Abyss deck and Ubel simply just got in the way. So, um, I decided that, you know what, it's not right, it shouldn't be on here. Of course, it's breaking one of the rules on Vime and Y, running back row, but uh, without back row, this deck didn't have any bite and I just decided, you know what, it's not it's not its place on Vime and Y. I thought it might have some synergy. I was like, oh, well, you can Armageddon Knight send one of the Burning Abyss, and then they'll get their effect, and of course, then whatever they summon would die, because there's not a Burning Abyss on the field, and, you know, you get both the effects if you discard with Dark Reaver and send with Dark Reaver, and once again, you know, so, the, slowly the deck just started turning less and less to Ubel, more and more Burning Abyss, and then next thing you know, the only things that are in there that are even Ubel related are just the three forms of Ubel and the three Limit Reverse, besides that, this is just a Burning Abyss deck, so, I was like, you know what, we're just going to take it off of Hum and Y. We're going to put something else on. Uh, at the current moment, I couldn't think of anything. That's just why we're holding the competition. Uh, if you want to enter the competition, be sure to. Uh, you know, decks. all the decks have to be turned in by the end of the month, November 30th. So, you know, you got a cool minute to go ahead and make the deck, test the deck, get the best deck that you can um, to me, and uh, win that competition. So, uh, while that is, uh, you know, taking place, the makings of the decks in the competition, uh, we are actually adding on another version of Supervised U Bell onto the lineup for Mondays. It's, it's kind of like Supervised U Bell, but a little, a little bit different. I want to go ahead and try it. There's various different experiments, very different variations that I want to go ahead and try. So um, look forward to that. So you get two Vime and Ys today. You get this, and then you also get the actual Vime and Y using the new uh, Vice deck. So um, I'll go into more detail about that deck when it's actually that time. But for now, let's quickly just go ahead and go to the deck profile. Uh, if you have any suggestions for this deck, because keep in mind, yes, this deck is being removed from Vitamin Y, but it is being placed on Daily Duels. So, you know, if you have any suggestions for the deck or how to improve it, then uh, be sure to go ahead and comment any suggestions in the comment section uh, below. Alright, so let's go ahead and go. So, um, I personally like running all the Burning Abyss, especially with Virgil. Uh, you know, the more targets that you have in your hand, the better. You know, there actually be times where... You know, I've run out of Burning Abyss monsters in my hand, so I gotta, you know, kind of recycle them or whatever, you know, Dante. So, uh, definitely just running the max, and, you know, it's not like the Burning Abyss monsters are bad. I remember at some point, you know, some people are only running two of some of them, but definitely three of each, because they're just so good. They're just so good and floaty, and, you know, you you, you, you gotta win. They're just so good. So, Triple of Sir. Sir is the one that special summons from the graveyard, so he's really good. Um, it's a really good combo with um, Don with one tour guide. You just got tour guide, summon Sir, XC into Dante, detach the Sir, Mill, you know, summon something back from like the graveyard or or, or grass, summon something from the deck. That way you have Dante and you have another burning abyss on the field. You just set ahead and set that uh, lake of fire and then bam, there's three cards. So yeah, definitely a great play. But uh, uh definitely like Sir, because Sir they kinda like, you know, back and forth with Dante. Then they kill your Dante, then Dante will get the Sir back in your hand, the Sir will summon the Dante, and, and they'll just keep on just playing with each other, so, um, really good play. Uh, Graph, he summons from the deck, so, uh, you know, that definitely sets up for your Lake of Fire plays, and, you know, who doesn't want to summon from the deck? Like, awesome floater. And then, of course, the best one, Skarm. Skarm, just go Tour Guide, summon Skarm, XC into Dante, detach the Skarm. And phase grab you back into our life. Skarm is what Sangan wanted to be. So, you know, um, no, I don't care whether Sangan gets unbanned or banned or stays banned, but, uh, you, know, you know, out of all the things to be accused of guilty for being banned, I definitely don't think that, uh, you know, Sangan is the correct choice. I mean, his his format that he was in, I, I definitely see where Konami is coming from. You know, it was um, March 2, 2013. Um, it was the end of the wind-up era and the end of the Dino Rabbit era. What's the card that both the decks had in common? Uh, of course, Sangan, Tour Guide got hit down to two. And, um, you know, it was definitely just, what, you know, that time. But, you know, now since we got Skarm, I mean, you know, Sangan, I mean, really, what is Sangan going to do? Be just a slower Skarm? You know, like, it's just so slow, so, you know. 
I'm not even sure, even if Sangan would get unbanned, I'm not even sure if anybody would run it, but, you know, besides, like, Exodia decks, but besides that, you know, just really slow. But Skarm, like, oh my god, Skarm's so good. Like, Skarm. Alright, just being able to just keep on getting them tour guides. Um, I, I tried a uh, triple of the, the tuner, wanted to get him as much as possible, also he's another discard, he, he may not have a uh, graveyard effect of course, but, you know, sometimes I'll get rubric to my hand, you can only control one Virgil, so you can just go ahead and paste our rubric and go ahead and use uh, Virgil's effect, so, yeah, so, um, not too terrible, like I said, I'm not sure what the ratio is with him so far, but, uh, he's not so bad, you know, he's a tuner, he does his job, you know, I wouldn't mind cutting him down to, like, maybe two, maybe one, because you really only need that many, especially since you can't just go, you know, tour guide summon and then immediately synchro, so, um, you know, one of the best ways to bring him out is, of course, Crane Crane, or you can just summon him from the graveyard with, uh, with, uh, Sir here, so, you have your ways. Of course, we run the three tour guide. Tour guide is like the, the fucking engine of this deck. Like, if tour guide ever gets hit, this deck would just be flat out done. So, I don't know. Like, Konami, if you want to hit this deck, here you go. You know, we upset precedent. She's been on the ban list before, so we can always go ahead and hit her again. So, you know, just hit this bitch. You know, I'm not for domestic violence, but hit this bitch. <laughs> so, uh, tour guide just makes this deck be able to just go into a one card freaking. Uh, Dante is just so good and just makes this deck. Uh, we run all four, three forms of Ebel, not necessary in this deck, really got in the way and, you know, it just wasn't necessary. So, of course, uh, if you're running Ebel and you're burning Abyss, you might want to take it out because it's just not worth it. <laughs> this this is three other cards. This could be more back row for this deck, you know. So, yeah. And I run the triple Crane Crane, you know. Crane Crane is also another one card exceeding tour got something from the deck. Crane Crane summons from the graveyard. And of course Crane Crane, uh uh I can actually make the Virgil with it. Because Crane Crane, uh you target a, a level three in your graveyard, you target its effects are negated, so it won't just die. So just like tour guide summoning it, it won't just die. So you can just go crane crane, summon the rubric, go right into the Virgil, so uh, definitely good. Like, if Burning Abyss decks aren't running Crane Crane, they should start running it because Crane Crane is just like, it's a one card exceed, it's a one card single. It's so good. So, it's it's your wolf bark over your deck. So, you, of course, you run triple, especially since it allows you to go into Virgil so easily. Alright, so that's the monsters. Onto the spells. Of course, we run the triple rank up Magic Astral Force. Uh, pretty much gives the deck the bite. Like I said, if Rank Up Magic Astral Force wasn't a card, then all Burning Abyss would be is just. A, uh, a glorified card trooper backed up by back row and floatiness. So, definitely, the rank up, Astro, the rank up magic Astro Force allows you to turn your Dante into a Pleiades, and, you know, that's just powerful enough just to run triple. I know people were, like, putting two, but no, this deck definitely three. Like, this card is just so good. So, definitely. Run the one foolish, go ahead and send something, whatever. Uh, one broke charge, because it's broken broke charge. You know, sending all the monsters in the graveyard, just making your plays. So, no complaints there. Uh, triple MST, because, you know, I, I play back row, but fuck back row, so, you know, I'm gonna play the hypocrite game, so I'm gonna MST the shit out of you, but then, you know, I'm gonna back row the shit out of, out of you as well, so, yeah. Uh, triple limit verse, this is mostly for you, Bell. I don't think I've ever limit reversed anybody else. I mean, I guess you can limit reverse Skarm, or you could limit reverse, uh, Graph, or you can even limit reverse Rubik, but, you know, it was mostly for you, Bell. They were mostly in the way, and, if Ebel wasn't in here, I wouldn't even be running them, because the deck is floaty enough. doesn't really need it. And even if I was going to run something, it wouldn't be Limit Reverse. It'd probably be, like, you know, like, Call of Haunted or something. Damn, Dante is expensive. You know, I don't blame it. Shit, you know, this deck is still top tier and, and still just as strong. I mean, uh, of course, a Lich and uh, Cow Cabbage suck, but this card is so good. I still need to talk about that in card review. I'll be talking about that tomorrow, of course, but God, you know. Uh, yeah, so that's what six card spaces one two three four five six So that's six whole card spaces. I could be doing something different with the deck. So uh, definitely we'll be uh, Making that change when we put it on a daily duel So like I said if you have any suggestions for this deck when it moves on to daily duels uh, Be sure to say in the comment section below like hey do this or try this out more back row or whatever All right, so of course uh, Triple Phoenix wind wind blast because you know, I I I plus you know I think from one blast, I discard, which would be a neg, but of course, when these guys are sent to the graveyard, I get a, I get an effect, so I zero out, and that just makes this card so powerful, you know? 
with drawing Yubel isn't so bad in this deck because I have the Phoenix Woman Last and Orgekis to go ahead and just discard the Yubel and get it out of my freaking hand because you know I'm going to draw it. I mean, of course it's Diamond Wise, so yeah. So these will probably stay. Geki Brave, same thing. You know, go ahead and just, you know, spin a card to my opponent, top of my opponent's deck. They draw it again. Or go ahead and just Orgeki Break, just discard it and just pop something that's in my way. So, uh, you know. Definitely, definitely good. Like one of the one of the things that makes this deck so good is the ability to run these cards and uh, you know still remain because it's supposed to be a neg. You're supposed to play it, discard something, so you play two to get rid of one of your opponent's cards. So it's supposed to be a neg one, but because your cards are so floaty, you know you go ahead and play this, you discard, pop one of your opponent's cards, which would be a neg one. But of course you're running the best, they get an effect, so you zero it out, and it's just so powerful. So yeah. And uh, I was running two uh, Fire Lake of the Burning Abyss. Uh, this card is really good, but it can get a little bit cloggy if you're not really set up for it. I know in one of the videos I kept getting it, and I didn't have any burning of this on the field, so it really wasn't that good. So I'm still attested it. I may put it down to one, just because, you know, the, on these number generators at one, it's more like, yeah, I'll get it. I could just set it up, and, you know, one lake of fire should be enough to just burn my opponent, so... Uh, yeah, and if I if push comes to shove, I can always end it back with Dante because Dante says this card's in the graveyard. You can target one burning abyss card in your graveyard, so I can always just get back the Lake of Fire, reset it, and do it all over again. So I'm probably gonna cut this down to one. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces. You know, we can put in we can put in uh, warning, bottomless compulse, D prisons. You know, we could we can put in a lot of shit. So. Um, there's a lot of room for this deck, um, even without the U-Bells, we'll still have, um, you know, 18 monsters, and 18 monsters, in my opinion, is, like, the perfect number, so, you know, just all three of the burning, oh, no, because we're probably going to cut Rubric down to, like, one, so, we still should be okay, like I said, the deck should be fine, it's very floaty, so, uh, like I said, if we're going to make any changes to it, be sure to go ahead and comment in the comment section below, but, uh, you know, we're going to cut Rubric down, we got a lot of space, we got a lot of room, and, you know, um, there's consistency, and then there's back row consistency. This deck can have back row consistency. There's not a lot of searcher cards where there's no, like, you know, get your fiend back or anything like that, or search a fiend from your deck to your hand or anything like that. So, uh, we can just go down the back row route and just run a crap ton of back row, and if I get a shitty hand, just one up into the back row until I get my play started. And, like you know, I said, there's two different versions of, uh, consistency. So, you can just go down that route. Like I said, it's going to be on a non tag day. It's going to be on Thursdays. We're placing uh, Chaos Dragon. So on Thursday, you'll get the Chaos Dragon deck profile. And then, of course, the episode of Burning Abyss on Daily Duels. So, um, you know, you can go ahead and see that. It's not a tag day. Therefore, I can run as much back as I want, one up my opponent, and, you know, feel the power, you know, be on the other end of the stick. Because usually I'm the one getting all one up by back row. So, you know, I'm just playing the game of Yu Gi Oh! And the game of Yu Gi Oh! Lots of traps. Lots and lots and lots of traps, you know. Comparison, in comparison to how many cards destroy spells and trap and destroy traps, there's a lot more traps. You know, one of the best cards, Heavy Storm, is still banned. So you know, you know, and some people you know love back row so much that they want Royal Decree to go, and it's just like, God damn, you know, like if Royal Decree ever gets hit, I would literally just quit Yu-Gi-Oh because that's no. So yeah, all right. So that's the main deck. Let's go ahead and go to extra deck. So um, I run Triple Dante. I mean, it may not be necessary, uh, but you know, I had a lot of room to spare in this extra deck, so I was just like, fuck it. So let's just go ahead and go with Triple Dante. Uh, I went to make sure that I every single time I got rank up, I could always rank up into a Pleiades because Pleiades wins duels. So uh, I decided to go with Triple Pleiades. I really wasn't into, you know, going for the Volcasaurus play with uh, the Genosaurus, and I really wasn't into uh, going into Bram of all the card. I was just kind of like, you know what? Nah, I'm good. So. I just like Pleiades all day. Like whenever I get this card, Pleiades, because Pleiades is the strongest. So definitely. Um, I don't know why I'm running King of Fairyland. Um, I, knowing me, I probably edit the deck. I put in uh, Mass Chameleons, and then I took them out, and then I never changed this. So, um, I was running Mass Chameleon, of course, just for you, Bell, more variety for you, Bell. But then Mass Chameleon has like absolutely no synergy with anybody else in the deck, which definitely hinders the deck. You know. Even Shadal Yubel, you can go ahead and summon Dragon back, so, uh, yeah, there's just, you know, if, if the only thing that Math Camille could bring back is Yubel, then what's the point of running it, so, um, yeah, I just forgot to take this out, so we'll just go ahead and take that out, um, and like I said, and these, some of these are just remains here because I just never changed the deck, I just left it alone, because you can clearly see, I, I got Exiton, I got Castell, I got Dagusto Emerald, but I have no fours at all, there's just threes, 
10, 11, 12. That's it. So, you know, so look and look at all that extra deck room in this build. Uh, card, he's okay. You know, I don't, I generally don't go into him too often. You know, I kind of feel if I could go for an Alucard, I'd better go for like a Dante who would get me something when he goes to a graveyard besides just touching himself and not even touching himself, but touching another ghost trick and putting it back to the hand or the extra deck. So, meh. And Zen Mains, Zen Mains is definitely a savior in this deck, you know. That would definitely help me turn uh, forms of evil into other forms and, you know, just pop some cards and, you know, stall out when I didn't want to go into Dante. So, um, I'd probably win the still the ones that made it. And then I ran the Virgil. I put him at three because I just wanted to try out and see how many I summoned. I think I summoned two. So, I don't know. Like I said, I got a lot of room in the extra deck to work with. So, you know, you know especially since I'm not a big fan of, too uh, too big of a fan of the, the plays that, um, you know, regular Burning Abyss decks do, like ranking up, you know, Genosaurus and Devocosaurus, or, or uh, you know, Bram off of Alucard, I'm just kind of like, yeah, so, I got a lot of room, so, uh, yeah, so like I said, if you guys have any suggestions uh, for this deck, then be sure to comment in the comment section below, so, I said, this is off, this is going to move it on to Daily Duels, uh, Burning Abyss is on there, so I said, uh, be sure to watch the second episode of I'm Why Today, where you will be getting a new version of Super Vicey Bell that I'm trying out, and if it works, it, it may be the new version of Super Vicey Bell that I want to go with, so I uh, look forward to it. So um, thank you for supporting me in this series. Thank you guys for, um, you know, supporting this deck on Vitamin Y. It was fun. It was short, but it was fun. So um, thanks for watching. Thanks for all support, and I will see you guys in the second episode of Vitamin Y you're getting today. Thanks for watching.